Hello, this is the Hello Nigeria show. Hello Nigeria show. Don't you dare touch the dial. Hello Nigeria. Hello Nigeria show. Don't you the touch the dial. Don't you the touch the dial. Cause it's Hello Nigeria. Hello Nigeria. Welcome back to Hello Nigeria. It's time for our top story. Now, according to the World Health, World Health Organization, 322 million people around the world are living with depression. Now, Nigeria ranks the 30th most suicide-prone country in the world, and also they've been ranked as the 10th most suicide-prone country in Africa. These figures are staggering. It is important that we have these conversations. Just yesterday, someone jumped off the bridge Third mainland bridge in Lagos. They're sad, but they're very necessary and very important to talk about. And our guest today is a better person, no better person to discuss this than her. She's a certified mind and mental health coach and neurolinguistic programming practitioner, helping individuals, groups, and organizations maximize their passion, purpose, profit, performance, and potential by cultivating the right thoughts, emotions, and behaviors. She's a founder of She Writes Woman. She's a multiple award-winning um, writer. She's, she holds an MSc in investment banking. And she was recently selected as the only female Queen's Young Leader 2018 and also among Nigeria's 100 on the 25 by SME 100 and the top 100 women by leading ladies Africa. Hawa Ojefo is our guest and no better person to have this conversation with. What's a so profile? <laughs> like I couldn't Thank even go so through much. the rest of her profile. Oh. You know, there's so much that you've done. Well done. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so now, one much. thing that is similar, or one thing that is unfortunate, is the fact that people could have elaborate profiles like this. People could seemingly have the life that everybody wants. Absolutely. I mean, recently we had the news of Kate Spade, Anthony Bourdain, people who seemed to have it all figured out, and they ended up committing suicide. So, at the end of the day, suicide is not a function of success, or is there any link between success and suicide? Ah, so how do we discuss this now? Because it's easy to connect almost everything together, you know. But I think what is most important is like what you said. It's not about success, or it doesn't immune. It doesn't mean that you're immune to you know suicidal ideation or you know mental illness or some sort of mental health challenge somewhere along the way. It doesn't matter if you have the loudest laughter or the widest smile or your life seems to be going on point, you know. I always talk about my story and how everything was perfect in my life at the time when I was very suicidal. And still, it was, and it, you know, it's, it, the thing is, a lot of times we are looking for sad faces. You know, we're looking for Buddha, sad, okay, okay, okay. You know, but we realize that it's the people that are happy that we lose. So I think first we need a we need a shift in perception on what we we think you know mental health challenges are or what being suicidal means you know it's not about your physicality it's not about temporary emotions like happy sad and all of that depression is not sadness you know sadness is an everyday emotion you know something happens you get sad you know something it's related to something but when you talk about depression you're going much deeper you know for example you could smile while you have depression and people say, oh, yeah, her life is fantastic, you know, what's the big deal? It doesn't matter. So I think first we need to step back and really understand that regardless of all these amazing things that are happening to an individual, they can still have depression or they can still have suicidal thoughts. Now, depression is one factor that leads to suicide, mm -hmm. but there are several other factors as well that lead people to committing suicide. Nigeria is said to be the 35th most suicidal country in the world, and that is not something any of us should be singing about. What makes suicide so prevalent in Nigeria? And also, what are the factors besides depression lead to suicide? Okay, so yes, um, Nigeria is prone, you know, um, to suicide. But one of the things I, I keep saying is, we can't categorically say, oh, suicide is on the rise for a couple of things, um, for a couple of reasons, being that, number one, you know, data collection has been really bad. We've not paid enough attention to mental health in Nigeria for a really long time. But you can ask people who have been practitioners for a long time. You can ask people who have been in the space or who have experienced a lot of things, and they'll tell you it's just because we're in the age of social media. You know, so more things are being, you know, magnified. And thankfully, 
you know, those conversations are beginning to come to the forefront. It's not that it's new to a large extent. It is that we're just hearing about them. You know, the focus is beginning to shift that, oh, wow, this is something that people are really dealing with. You know, so before Nigeria really caught, you know, caught in with the whole, you know, suicide and mental health, you know, the news and the awareness, the World Health Organization still had those stats regardless. You know, so it's like it was there. We just swept it under the carpet for a really, really, really long time. And yes, you know, beyond depression, there are so many other things, you know. And people talk about, you know, economic conditions, the social conditions. You talk about cultural degradation of some sort. People feel like they're held down by two major things in society, culture and religion. And, you know, you have youth going through different kinds of pressures from home to school to, you know, peer pressure, you know, different kinds of influences are in this age where you have, you know, quick validation, you know, fast information. Everything is really moving fast. So we need to catch up with the news. Now, one of the problems with suicide, you said for the longest time we haven't paid attention to suicide and depression. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, now the spotlight is on it. However, there's still so much stigma. I mean, I put up the post on my Instagram this morning to say that we're talking about suicide and depression and asking people if they've ever experienced depression or had suicidal thoughts. And someone said, God forbid. But the truth is, that is the mentality we have. And we find that religion is also a hindrance towards us pushing the message out there about suicide and depression. So how can we break the stigma and how can we push this message out there? Conversations. More and more conversations. I'm a big advocate of conversations. It, and for me, it's not, I mean, there's a place for everything. So on the one hand, I mean, there's so many things to do. On the one hand, we need mental health awareness on a very large scale, like a national awareness of mental health. People need to begin to understand that it's not a death sentence. It doesn't mean that if you have this, then you're like, you know, the people from the village and all of those things that, you know, have been the narrative for such a long time. People need to understand that, yes, these things happen. Regardless, in spite of what you may have done or not done, you can break down at some point, you know. We need to continue to push, you know, conversations like survivors coming up or people who have had these experiences coming up to tell their stories. And yes, it's kind of like a vicious cycle. You talk, you get stigmatized, you don't talk, you perpetuate the stigma. Sort of, you know, because you are foiling it by not talking, you know. So we need to all create an environment where people feel safe to talk about these issues, regardless of how little you are. It could be one person, you know, in an office space or in the family. I know we just, it just takes one person at a particular place knowing how to talk about mental health, knowing how to receive this and knowing how to reach out. So, you know, the awareness, understanding that we need to make mental health awareness mainstream. We need to take, change the narrative in our music, the narrative in our movies, on TV, because these are the things that, you know, distort that narrative, that story, that picture that we've been shown for many years of what mental health or mental illness is and what it means to be suicidal and all of these things, because it's hard. I mean, people say, God forbid, and it's really not their fault that they say that. If they knew better, they would do better. You know, maybe I wouldn't have had this conversation, you know, six, seven, eight, nine years ago. You know, for me to do, oh, okay, okay. You know, but then it happening to me, and then I realized that by virtue of my story, telling my story, I realized that a lot of people out there were actually really going through this. And I'm like, what is stopping all of us from really talking, really? And it's the narrative. It's that picture. If I talk, ha. Huh. As a matter of fact, a friend of mine gave an analogy this morning. She posted a picture on Instagram of the inside of a house and said, when we're going to go and buy a house or rent a house, mm -hmm. we'll look at the exterior just as much as we look at the interior. But when we want to talk about health, we look at physical health and we ignore mental health, and that shouldn't be the case. But away from that, there are two sides to this argument. On one side, people say we do not have enough mental health carers in Nigeria, including rehabilitation centers, uh, uh, physiologists, psychotherapists, etc. And on the other side of the argument, people say that no, the main issue is that people do not want to step forward. As someone that's worked in mental health, where, where have you seen the real issue and the real crux of the matter here? It's hard to point it at one direction or not point it in the other direction. Um, I do believe that there are resources. Yes, um, not enough considering the Nigerian population and not enough perhaps catering to, you know, the grassroots. Because a lot of times we know we build, you know, apps to make it easy and all of that. But when you look at the significant part of Nigerian population, people who are online or people who ha have, you know, access to digital information, you know, it's really a very small number. You know, so we're really losing out on the people in the grassroots. And it's, 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 it's a whole lot. So we really need to understand that, um, yes, there are resources. And I do believe that to a large extent, a lot of the resources are underutilized. I always tell people that any help is better than no help at all. 
So if you need to go to a psychiatric hospital, please go to a psychiatric hospital. General hospitals in Lagos, I think almost all primary health care centers actually, you know, um, provide mental health care. So those are being utilized, and there are rehabilitation centers. But on what scale of efficiency at the same time? Okay, so that's the thing, obviously. Um, the healthcare system has a problem. All right. Now, we're talking about structural issues here, institutional, like real structural issues. You know, we're talking about one psychiatrist to, you know, 200,000 or 2 million Nigerians. However, the statistics have been thrown around for a really long time. So, yes, there's a burden. Let's look at it from healthcare. a personal point of view. Mm -hmm. You've been through this as well. You dealt with suicide. Share yeah. your story with us. Okay, so um, this happened when I was in the corporate world. So at that time, you know, working, I was living on the mainland, working on the island, typical Nigerian, Lagos setting, sort of, you know, and it seemed life was good. I mean, I graduated with a double master's degree, you know, top of my class in school, and life was just, I mean, <laughs> my friend would say societally good, you know, that kind of thing, because people would look at you and say, everything is going perfectly well. You know, but I didn't understand this kind of darkness that was inside me. Like, I just felt like... I don't feel right. When things are supposed to be happy, as in happy moments, they're just fleeting. You know, it's like, okay, yeah, I'm in the midst of it, I'm laughing, but it's not really on the inside. I'm dark inside, I feel stuck. Like, I want to smile, I want to genuinely be happy, but I couldn't. And talking to people about it is hard because um, I don't understand it. And that's the problem. A lot of times we tell people to reach out. But the truth is, how do you want to reach out when you can't quite form exactly what is wrong with you? And it's like, how do I form it into a word? Like, I don't know what's wrong. With me. What, what, I mean, is this normal? So I, I did tell a friend one day as we were driving, I'm like, you know, do you ever feel like you want to, you want to end your life? And he's like, oh, how would you say such a thing? And it, it was in that moment I realized that maybe my thoughts haven't been quite normal all these years. You know, because at that moment I really wanted to cease to exist. I'm like, no. And then when I used to drive, a trailer would be coming and I'll be like, what if I just like turn and if the trailer hits me it can just be an accident so nobody has to deal with the fact that i killed myself those are the kind of thoughts that were going through my mind for years but nobody knew how did you get help so i just realized one day i've done everything they said you should do say so you should fast more and pray more and maybe reduce your stress you know hang out more often do all these other things that are all very important but i hadn't gone to the core of the matter so one day i really just went on Instagram, I saw somebody that talked about mental health or she was a psychologist or something. I sent her a message, please, you have a number of a psychologist? And then, I mean, that was a while ago, so I don't even think there was Uber in Nigeria. I just took a taxi and I went straight to Yaba Psychiatric Hospital by myself. I didn't tell any friend. I didn't tell any family member. You know, so when I was giving my diagnosis, I always tell people I felt like it was closure. I didn't necessarily have the luxury of denial because at that time, it was already a case of I, I wanted to end my life. So it was closure for me. And from there, it was psychiatrists because they realized I wasn't taking therapy very well. I needed medication. And I happily went on these things. So I when people tell me, how did you overcome it? I said, I was very religious about it. I wanted to overcome it. I needed to be deliberate and intentional about it. And I'm not saying that that's how everyone's story has to be. But there are many possibilities, you know, beyond, you know, suicide and feeling that, like mental health or mental illness is some sort of death sentence. You know, it isn't. Now, there are a lot of people out there who suffer from depression, and I can say this because I've been in that position where I've been depressed and I've thought, you know what, a therapist or a psychologist cannot help me right now. And in the end, my story actually turned out quite similar to yours, but there are people out there who hold that belief and say to themselves that I can't actually go to a therapist to get help. It's not going to help me. What would you say to people like that out there? Um, so it's a lot of thinking. It's a whole lot of thinking. It is knowing that, you know, you have a problem. Just the same way you would go and seek a medical doctor, a GP for, you know, malaria or something of that sort. You're going to want to go and see somebody for your mind. And it's a, some, some level of self-stigmatization to believe that, you know, somebody can't help me for my mental health, but somebody can help me for my physical health. You are actually acting out a narrative. So please know that there is indeed help. And it doesn't make you weak in any sort of way at all. There are possibilities, there is hope, there is recovery. I can tell you for a fact that that is very possible. And how can we as individuals help to spot out what are the things we need to look out for someone who is suffering from depression or suicide? What, what are the signs, the telltale signs? Okay, so there are a couple of things I would say. Um, so look out for your friends that used to be out there and are no longer out there. You know, look, look out for those friends that, you know, they used to post very often. Now they don't post as often. Or, you know, they used to hang out a lot. Now they don't hang out a lot. 
or you know friends that suddenly they, they seem happy but it looks very superficial they're no longer going within like we're not having conversations on a deeper level they are dodging things or you know um they're always tired or they are getting reckless or you know they are, they are saying some kind of things so and when you ask how are you the most basic is when you ask how are you are you okay and people are like fine have a conversation really and truly we need to stop being in a hurry because we are losing people and it would not be that i was so much in a hurry if you lost your mother or your daughter or your friend or your you know spouse you would be regretting that was it really worth it that i was so much in a hurry you know, right. So those are really important. Thank you so much for sharing all of this, Hawa. Thank you. Usually we would wrap up here with you, <laughs> but there's still several angles to this we need to look at. The things people need to refrain from doing when they spot someone who is depressed or having mm. suicidal thoughts. So there's several Absolutely. do's and don'ts. When we come back from the break, we'll still be speaking with Hawa or Jayfo. And if you missed the first part of the conversation, please stick around for the next part. Remember, we're still also going to be talking about music as a tool for unity. But first of all, let's head over to the news center. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Hello Nigeria. We are still here seated with Howard discussing mental health and particularly suicide and depression. Now we do know that the federal government of Nigeria does criminalize suicide to a certain extent, but aside the government, there are definitely ways that we as individuals can enact a necessary change. Howard, what are the things that we need to stop saying to people who are going through depression and suicidal thoughts? Um, I think one of the most common ones is telling them to snap out of it. It's okay. You know, just come out of it. Or they would attach you to be grateful. Look at your life. You should be grateful for what you have, you know. Those things don't, don't help at all. If anything, they push the person further inside because they're now wondering, like, is it that I'm not grateful? Is it that, you know, is it my ingratitude that's causing me to, you know, go through all of these things? Or sometimes people will say, you know, uh, just, you know, be more prayerful. Be more prayerful. You're not praying enough. You know, you have to build your connection with God, that kind of thing. And whilst those may be truths all by themselves, in this particular scenario, they don't help. You know, you don't think that somebody who is, go who is going through depression, number one, we're in a society where you can't even talk about it at the onset because you don't understand it. There's not enough awareness for everybody to know that, oh, I think, I, I think this feeling that I've been going through for, you know, this period of time, I think it's time to seek help because it might be something extra. So at the time when people are talking, there's already been a lag which means that it has, you know, aggravated over time. And then at that point, you tell them, oh, be grateful, or talk to God, or snap out of it, or just, you know, you have to have strong willpower. And I'm like, ah, ah strong willpower, really? Now, these are the things that we really need to stay away. And there are several other things that we need to bring to the forefront of the conversation when it comes to suicide and depression. Now, however, for people who are battling with suicidal mm -hmm. thoughts and who are depressed, how can they get help? Okay, so like I said before, there's help for everybody. So you, psychiatric hospitals are you know at the lower lower chain of the whole thing you know affordable i cannot quite say okay the quality of care that you're looking for might be there but it is something to start with you know psychiatric hospitals are there the primary health care centers are there all over lagos actually um i think all the primary health care centers so have all the equipped. general hospitals in lagos all the general hospitals in lagos as well or have you know psychiatry departments and things like that and teaching hospitals always have a psychiatric you know because of course it's a teaching hospital so they are psychiatry students or psychology students and they also have practice as well and then of course there are lots of organizations or private practices and lots of organizations really you know um that are doing a lot of work in the mental health space like she writes woman okay tell us quickly um do you have a hotline so for those who are battling suicidal thoughts and depression and they need help is there a number to call yeah of course you can call our number on 0817-491-3329 that's 0817- one nine one three three two nine or you can send a whatsapp message all right so we are pushing out this information out there because we do not want to see repetition of the incidences of suicide and depression that we see there's some sort of imitation suicide that's going on right now so when one suicide is largely broadcasted we start to see a repetition which is what has been happening in the past week so please if you're out there watching and you're having your battling suicidal thoughts or you're being depressed Please understand that you're not alone, that there is help for you, and all you need to do is reach out as much as you can. Please call this number. Please call the number again. 0817-491-3329. All right. That is the number to call. And you can also follow at She Writes Women on Instagram and on Facebook as well, and right? And Twitter as well. And Twitter. She Writes Women. So what they do is they connect people who are battling <laughs> depression with healthcare givers. Thank you so much, Howard, for watching. Thank you so much, Howard, for, for being here. Thank you for having me. Awesome time. <laughs> To enjoy more of this, our Ogun Get videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.